Hallelujah. Um, I'm very excited. Uh, we are continuing to speak about discernment. And uh, we are currently on just an introduction about discernment. And uh, the last few programs, we actually, let me just look through what we have seen. We've, we've looked at program 62. We looked at rightly dividing the word of God. Then we looked at uh, breaking up fallow ground, which means, what does it mean that there's a, there's a thorn maybe in us and God wants to remove the thorns in our heart? And then to sow into righteousness. And we looked at the Bible prophesy about the great falling away. We're going to look more deeply into that before Jesus can return. The Bible says there's going to be a great falling away of Christians. And so we began to look at the introduction of how important discernment is in order not to be deceived. Hallelujah. And then we looked at what I believe God says there's going to be this great separation in the last days where the chaff is going to be separated from the wheat. And God spoke to me about how we want to separate the chaff from the wheat. And then we looked at um, a counterfeit religion, a religion that really seems like it has the gospel, but it has no power. And if we do not have discernment, we will not be able to find out why my gospel, why, why is my prayer not answered? Why does the things that I'm asking God for not breaking through? So sometimes we can begin to blame God for things, but it's actually not a problem with God, but a problem with our um, gospel, with what we believed. And therefore there's a counterfeit that really looks like the original, but it's not. And um, lastly, we looked at how do we divide the Bible correctly in terms of where if you can't really discern if you do not know where the New Testament and the Old Testament really starts and ends. And we looked at the importance of the restoration of the gospel. And so today I want to look into the Spirit leading us and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth. Let's just pray. Father, I thank you so much for this new day, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you love us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that right now, even as we're going to look at how your Spirit leads us, I pray, Father, that your Spirit will come and reveal things to people this morning, Father. Reveal things in their heart. I pray for a sensitivity to your Spirit, Lord. Father, where we spoke about hearing your voice, that we will begin to open ourselves up to be able to discern your voice, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we will know the Holy Spirit, that he can lead us and guide us into all truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, um, we might think that the word truth is a very simple word. But do you know that there are so many things in this world that are trying to steal truth? The Bible says that Jesus is the way, uh, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. So Jesus is truth. If we can truly have truth, we can have Jesus. Amen. And so in the Old Testament, there was a way of determining truth. Maybe you never, never knew that. But there's this verse here in Exodus uh, 28 verse 30 that says, in the breastplate of judgment, you shall put the Urim and the Thummim, the unspecified articles used when the high priest asked God's counsel for all Israel. And they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord, and Aaron shall bear the judgment or the rights or the judicial decisions of the Israelites upon his heart before the Lord continually." So this, this strange verse appears in the Old Testament where the high priest had to wear something called the Urim and the Thummim. So what is the Urim and the Thummim? What an interesting word. Well, um, what it really was, he had a breastplate on, the high priest had a, had a breastplate on and he had the 12 stones inside of the breastplate. And we didn't have time to go into that now. But on the shoulders, there were two stones. There was a Urim and the Thummim, a white stone and a black stone. And these stones were used to determine truth. Hallelujah. And you would say, how did they do that? Let's look at a scripture and how truth was determined in Acts chapter 1 verse 20. It's this amazing story where we look at now the New Testament and we see that the apostles 
have been chosen by Jesus. Jesus has resurrected. He's ascended into heaven. And Judas was killed because Judas committed suicide. And now they wanted to choose another man in Judas's place. And it says here, For in the book of Psalms it is written, Let his place of residence become deserted and gloomy, and let there be no one to live in it again. And let another take his position of overseership. And so one of the other men who have accompanied us, or one of the other apostles, which was with us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, from the baptism of John at the outset until the day he was taken up from us, one of these men must join us and become a witness to testify to his resurrection. So they were having to choose some people. So there was a few people, there's a few options of people that they could choose, but they didn't really know which person God has chosen. And so verse 23 says, And they accordingly proposed and nominated two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, and, uh, who was also surnamed Justus, and Matthias. So there were two people that they had a choice from that they had to choose to become part of the 12th, one of them to replace Judas now. So that's a very important position. They were with Jesus from the beginning. They were from the time of John the Baptist. They were always there in the background. They were not part of the 12th, but they were there. And now they said we had to choose another one because the scripture says in Psalms, let his place be deserted and let another take his position. Amen. So they literally took the scriptures and they had to take another one for the position. Now the question is, how are they going to determine which one? So they prayed and said, Lord, we want you to determine for us which one. Determine the truth for us. Determine your will for us. You know, determining truth is also determining the will of God. And in verse 24 says, they prayed and said, you, O Lord, who know all the hearts and their thoughts and passions and desires and appetites and purposes and endeavors. Indicate to us which one of these two you have chosen. Wow! So they want to know from God which one God has chosen. And to take this ministry and receive the position of an apostle from which Judas fell away and went astray to go where he belonged. And they drew lots between the two and the lot fell to Matthias, and he was added and counted with the eleven apostles. So something amazing happened. They drew lots. Now when we hear lots, we hear little sticks and somebody draw a stick. And that could be a way of, of, of the lot being drawn. But another way that the lot was drawn in the Old Testament was through these two stones. So when they took those stones in their hand, they would now... Um, throw them and they would cast them and the stones would fall in a certain direction. White, black, or black, black, or white, white. And if they fall on a certain direction, they would know what God's will was. And you would say, wow, that sounds like something weird. But that is exactly how in the Old Testament truth was determined. So a person would come and the high priest would say, okay, let's pray to God. We're going to trust God and we're going to cast these stones and the, the stones are going to tell us what is the truth. Wow. Hallelujah. And so there was a way to determine truth in the Old Testament. But there's another way in the New Testament that Jesus, listen, after I left, truth will no longer be determined by that. Truth will now be determined by the Spirit. Now listen to this. In John 14 verse 17, it says, The Spirit of truth whom the world does not recognize or welcome or take to its heart, because it does not see him or know and recognize him. But you know and you recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and he will be in you. So Jesus says, I'm going to leave the earth and I'm going to give you the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. The world does not receive him. The world does not recognize him because they don't know him. But he says, but you, you the apostles, you know him. Because he was, he lives with you and now he will be in you. Hallelujah. So what is Jesus talking about? He's talking about himself. He says, I was with you. I am the truth. I showed you the truth. And now I'm going to leave. And you're going to need direction. You're going to need someone to show you what is God's will for your life. And I'm going to send you the spirit of truth. Now in John chapter 16, I want to end off 
today. And this is very important, you know. We might think we have all truth. We might think that everything that I believe is perfect truth, the perfect gospel that I have. But if you really had the perfect gospel, why is there 33,000 different denominations in this world? There are 33,000 different denominations all believing different things. And so what is the truth? We need the Holy Spirit to show us what is the truth. So in John 16 verse 12, it says, I have still many things to say to you, but you are not able to bear them or to take them upon you or to grasp them now. But when He, the Spirit of Truth, the truth-giving Spirit comes, He will guide you into all truth, the whole truth and the full truth. For He will not speak of His own message or His own authority, but He will tell whatever He hears from the Father, and He will give the message that has been given to him. And he will announce and declare to you even the things that are to come, what will happen in the future. And he will honor and glorify me because he will take what and he will receive and draw upon what is mine and he will reveal and he will declare, disclose and transmit it to you. Oh, this is so beautiful. He says, everything the Father has is mine. Jesus says, everything that the Father has is mine. And that is what I meant when I said He, that's the Holy Spirit, will take the things that are mine, which I got from the Father, and He will reveal, and He will disclose, and He will declare, and He will transmit it to you. Hallelujah. So, what I really want to show you today is, we have the Holy Spirit. He is our Urim and our Thummim today. He's the one that wants to bring truth to us. And we need to learn to rely on Him. But if we do not know Him, and if we do not recognize Him, we will not be able to discern. And so I want to pray for you today. What I love about this verse, He says, you can't understand everything now. But when He comes, He's going to give you understanding. He's going to begin to explain things. There were things that Jesus was telling them, but they were not getting it. And He says, I'm going to leave now. And when He comes, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, He's going to guide you. He's going to lead you into all. All truth. Hallelujah. Now can you imagine there is actually something called absolute truth because the Holy Spirit wants to lead us into all truth. Amen. So over the years God has used me and God began to reveal many things to me regards truth. And I had to become very sensitive and I had to learn to to really learn to hear in the Spirit and to discern by the Spirit what is truth. And the Word of God is truth. And there are many different tests that we can do. We're going to look at them in the future of how we can learn to become better at discerning truth. Hallelujah. And so I want to pray for you right now that you will begin to get a revelation where the Spirit of God Himself will disclose to you, will declare to you, and will even transmit to you a anointing, an impartation that can bring truth to you. Hallelujah. So, Father, I want to pray for you, to you right now, Lord. I want to pray for each person online, each person that's going to listen to this message, Father, that they will become sensitive by your spirit of truth, Lord, the spirit that brings truth, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray that there will be a transmission taking place. There will be a revealing taking place, Lord. There will be an impartation of truth, Lord, to them in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will lead people into a place where they will begin to discover more and more truth, Lord. As we're going to look in in future programs at how you lead us, Lord, teach them. Teach them to be led into all truth. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, thank you for your anointing. I just feel like God says just to receive right now. There's an anointing falling. There's a purity of the anointing of the Spirit of God. That if you hold out and if you say, God, show me truth. Begin to reveal by the Spirit of God truth to me. He will do it. Yes, receive right now. Receive that place, that position of truth in Him. The truth that will give life, the truth that sets free, the truth that 
will break through every barrier and every lie that has kept people captive. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen.